Chapter 22 The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Tell Aaron and his sons to separate themselves from the holy things of the children of Israel, which they make holy to me, and that they not profane my holy name. I am the Lord. Tell them, If any of all your seed throughout your generations approaches the holy things, which the children of Israel make holy to the Lord, having his uncleanness on him, that soul shall be cut off from before me. I am the Lord. Whoever of the seed of Aaron is a leper, or has an issue, he shall not eat of the holy things until he is clean. Whoever touches anything that is unclean by the dead, or by a man whose seed goes from him, or whoever touches any creeping thing, whereby he may be made unclean, or a man of whom he may take uncleanness, whatever uncleanness he has, the person that touches any such shall be unclean until the evening, and shall not eat of the holy things, unless he bathe his body in water. When the sun is down he shall be clean, and afterward he shall eat of the holy things, because it is his bread. That which dies of itself or is torn by animals he shall not eat, defiling himself by it. I am the Lord. They shall therefore keep my charge, lest they bear sin for it, and die therein, if they profane it. I am the Lord who sanctifies them. No stranger shall eat of the holy thing. A foreigner living with the priest or a hired servant shall not eat of the holy thing. But if a priest buys a slave, purchased by his money, he shall eat of it. And such as are born in his house, they shall eat of his bread. If a priest's daughter is married to an outsider, she shall not eat of the heave offerings of the holy things. But if a priest's daughter is a widow, or divorced, or has no child, and has returned to her father's house as in her youth, she may eat of her father's bread, but no stranger shall eat any of it. If a man eats something holy unwittingly, then he shall add the fifth part of its value to it, and shall give the holy thing to the priest. The priest shall not profane the holy things of the children of Israel which they offer to the Lord, and so cause them to bear the iniquity that brings guilt when they eat their holy things. For I am the Lord who sanctifies them. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and to his sons, and to all the children of Israel, and say to them, Whoever is of the house of Israel, or of the foreigners in Israel, who offers his offering, whether it be any of their vows, or any of their freewill offerings which they offer to the Lord for a burnt offering, that you may be accepted, you shall offer a male without blemish of the bulls, of the sheep, or of the goats. But whatever has a blemish, that you shall not offer, for it shall not be acceptable for you. Whoever offers a sacrifice of peace offerings to the Lord to accomplish a vow, or for a freewill offering, of the herd or of the flock, it shall be perfect to be accepted. There shall be no blemish therein. Blind, injured, maimed, having a wart, festering, or having a running sore, you shall not offer these to the Lord, nor make an offering by fire of them on the altar to the Lord. Either a bull or a lamb, that has any deformity, or lacking in his parts, that you may offer for a freewill offering, but for a vow it shall not be accepted. That which has its testicles bruised, crushed, broken, or cut, you shall not offer to the Lord, neither shall you do thus in your land. Neither from the hand of a foreigner shall you offer the bread of your God of any of these, because their corruption is in them. There is a blemish in them. They shall not be accepted for you. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, When a bull, or a sheep, or a goat is born, then it shall remain seven days with its mother, and from the eighth day and thenceforth it shall be accepted for the offering, of an offering made by fire to the Lord, whether it is a cow or a ewe, you shall not kill it and its young both in one day. When you sacrifice a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord, you shall sacrifice it so that you may be accepted. It shall be eaten on the same day. You shall leave none of it until the morning. I am the Lord. Therefore you shall keep my commandments and do them. I am the Lord. You shall not profane my holy name, but I will be made holy among the children of Israel. I am the Lord who makes you holy who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord.
Psalm 28 by David To you, Yahweh, I call. My rock, don't be deaf to me. Lest, if you are silent to me, I would become like those who go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my petitions when I cry to you, when I lift up my hands towards your most holy place. Don't draw me away with the wicked, with the workers of iniquity who speak peace with their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. Give them according to their work, and according to the wickedness of their doings. Give them according to the operation of their hands. Bring back on them what they deserve, because they don't regard the works of Yahweh, nor the operation of His hands. He will break them down and not build them up. Blessed be Yahweh, because He has heard the voice of my petitions. Yahweh is my strength and my shield. My heart has trusted in Him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices, with my song I will thank Him. Yahweh is their strength, He is a stronghold of salvation to His anointed. Save your people, and bless your inheritance. Be their shepherd also, and bear them up forever. Psalm 29, a psalm by David. Ascribe to Yahweh, you sons of the mighty. Ascribe to Yahweh glory and strength. Ascribe to Yahweh the glory due to his name. Worship Yahweh in holy array. Yahweh's voice is on the waters. The God of glory thunders, even Yahweh on many waters. Yahweh's voice is powerful. Yahweh's voice is full of majesty. The voice of Yahweh breaks the cedars. Yes, Yahweh breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them also to skip like a calf, Lebanon and Syrian like a young wild ox. Yahweh's voice strikes with flashes of lightning. Yahweh's voice shakes the wilderness. Yahweh shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. Yahweh's voice makes the deer calve and strips the forest bare. In his temple everything says, Glory! Yahweh sat enthroned at the flood. Yes, Yahweh sits as king forever. Yahweh will give strength to his people. Yahweh will bless his people with peace. Chapter 5 Guard your steps when you go to God's house, for to draw near to listen is better than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they don't know that they do evil. Don't be rash with your mouth, and don't let your heart be hasty to utter anything before God, for God is in heaven and you on earth, therefore let your words be few. For as a dream comes with a multitude of cares, so a fool's speech with a multitude of words. When you vow a vow to God, don't defer to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay that which you vow. It is better that you should not vow than that you should vow and not pay. Don't allow your mouth to lead you into sin. Don't protest before the messenger that this was a mistake. Why should God be angry at your voice and destroy the work of your hands? For in the multitude of dreams there are vanities, as well as in many words. But you must fear God. If you see the oppression of the poor, and the violent taking away of justice and righteousness in a district, don't marvel at the matter. For one official is eyed by a higher one, and there are officials over them. Moreover, the profit of the earth is for all. The king profits from the field." He who loves silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he who loves abundance with increase. This also is vanity. When goods increase, those who eat them are increased, and what advantage is there to its owner except to feast on them with his eyes? The sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eats little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not allow him to sleep. There is a grievous evil which I have seen under the sun, wealth kept by its owner to his harm. Those riches perish by misfortune, and if he has fathered a son, 
there is nothing in his hand. As he came forth from his mother's womb, naked shall he go again as he came, and shall take nothing for his labor, which he may carry away in his hand. This also is a grievous evil, that in all points as he came, so shall he go. And what profit does he have who labors for the wind? All his days he also eats in darkness, he is frustrated, and has sickness and wrath. Behold, that which I have seen to be good and proper is for one to eat and to drink, and to enjoy good in all his labor, in which he labors under the sun, all the days of his life which God has given him, for this is his portion. Every man also to whom God has given riches and wealth, and has given him power to eat of it, and to take his portion, and to rejoice in his labor, this is the gift of God. For he shall not often reflect on the days of his life, because God occupies him with the joy of his heart. Paul's Second Letter to Timothy Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, according to the promise of the life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace, from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve as my forefathers did with a pure conscience. How unceasing is my memory of you in my petitions night and day, longing to see you remembering your tears, that I may be filled with joy, having been reminded of the unfeigned faith that is in you, which lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded in you also. For this cause I remind you that you should stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. Therefore don't be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but endure hardship for the gospel according to the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before times eternal, but now has been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this I was appointed as a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this cause I suffer also these things. Yet I am not ashamed, for I know him whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to guard that which I have committed to him against that day. Hold the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you, guard through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. This you know that all who are in Asia turned away from me, of whom are Phygelus and Hermogenes. May the Lord grant mercy to the house of Onesiphorus, for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me diligently and found me. The Lord grant to him to find the Lord's mercy in that day. And in how many things he served at Ephesus, you know very well, 